Whispers of German scientists, driven by the desire to develop a weapon capable of repelling advancing Allied forces, are said to have embarked on the creation of a time-traveling object with the intention of helping them win the Second World War. The legend of the bell continues to thrive within the realms of UFO enthusiasts. This enduring belief has captured the attention of many, prompting extensive research into this topic and causing some to suggest that German scientists may have succeeded in their endeavor. In the realm of unidentified objects, there exists a fascinating notion that the invention of a particular machine was a product of reality. Despite their defeat in World War II, the Germans managed to establish a reputation for their advanced weaponry. Surpassing Allied tanks in technological prowess, German tanks often held a technical edge on the battlefield. Additionally, they introduced fighter jets into combat, even before the Allies had the chance to do so. The infamous V series of terror weapons, including the V-1 cruise missile and V-2 ballistic missile, instilled terror and fear, although their strategic effectiveness was subject to scrutiny. These high-tech advancements showcased the Germans' innovative capabilities, contributing to their enduring legacy in the annals of warfare. In the year 2000, a renowned author and researcher by the name of Igor Witkowski published a book titled The Truth About the Wonder Weapon, which brought to light a fascinating discovery known as The Bell. This mysterious artifact, with its intriguing origins and perplexing capabilities, has captivated the attention of historical researchers and shows how far a country will go in order to succeed. According to Witkowski, he acquired his information from leaked documents belonging to Jakob Sporenberg, an SS officer. These documents were made accessible to Witkowski by an anonymous source within Polish intelligence. However, the condition imposed was that Witkowski could only read and translate the documents without being allowed to make any copies of them. This revelation sheds light on the meticulous nature of Witkowski's research as he painstakingly studied and deciphered the content of these classified files. The experiments involving the enigmatic device known as the Bell were conducted in Der Riese, a facility located near the Czech border in Poland. Extensive research conducted by Witkowski suggests that this enigmatic apparatus was situated underground. However, during the live experiments, an intriguing phenomenon occurred. The bell would mysteriously float upward upon the opening of a hatch. To ensure its stability, chains were employed, connecting it to a concrete structure that persists to this day. Witkowski has referred to this supporting apparatus as the henge, although some mainstream researchers argue that it may actually be the remnants of a cooling tower. However, others who have researched this topic have said that the cooling tower provided the perfect structure that was needed in order to test this mysterious creation. The bell, an intriguing object of considerable proportions, stood at an impressive height of approximately 15 feet, while its base spanned approximately 9 feet in width. Wrapped around the base were enigmatic symbols reminiscent of ancient hieroglyphics, bearing a striking resemblance to the peculiar symbols reported on the Kecksburg object. The external composition of the bell consisted of a sturdy and dense metal, commonly referred to as hard or heavy metal. Nevertheless, it is the intricate mechanisms and contents residing within the interior that truly captivate curiosity. In the realm of theories surrounding German technology, one of its fundamental aspects revolved around anti-gravity propulsion. As per the translated documents by Witkowski, the concept entailed the utilization of two counter-rotating cylinders. These cylinders would be filled with a remarkable substance known as Zerum-525, boasting a distinct violet hue reminiscent of mercury. It is noteworthy that Zerum-525 possessed an exceptionally volatile nature, necessitating its storage in a thermos flask standing one meter tall, which was further enclosed within a protective lead casing. This detailed account provides a comprehensive understanding of the intriguing anti-gravity propulsion theories prevalent during this era. During the period when the bell, an experimental device, was operational, any object or living being within a vicinity of 200 meters experienced severe harm, often leading to fatal consequences. As documented in the mysterious records, it was unfortunate that five out of the original group of seven scientists involved in the project succumbed to various mishaps during the course of their experiments. 
The impacts of these injuries manifested in the form of crystal formations within animal tissues and the unusual gelling and separation of blood components. This information sheds light on the grave repercussions that occurred as a result of the close proximity to the bell during its active phase. Inside the bell, there existed a peculiar interior, adorned with a substance resembling a mirror. When activated, this seemingly ordinary mirror had the remarkable capability to reveal extraordinary visions of both the past and the future. It's reported that the bell possessed an even more extraordinary ability. It had the power to manipulate time and space, bending them to its will. In essence, this mysterious craft can be likened to a time machine, a mind-boggling invention that delves into realms beyond our comprehension. During World War II, the incredible advancements made by German scientists and engineers were acknowledged by their adversaries. The United States Army, recognizing the potential value of these technological feats, strategically dispatched reconnaissance teams to Germany during the war's later stages. Their primary objective was to secure not only the brilliant minds behind these innovations, but also the military technology itself. This urgency stemmed from the desire to prevent other powers particularly the Soviet Union, from capturing these invaluable resources first. This operation, famously known as Project Paperclip, resulted in the successful acquisition of various assets, including the highly advanced V-2 missiles. Additionally, one of the most notable individuals obtained through this effort was the renowned aerospace engineer Werner von Braun, widely recognized as the mastermind behind the V-2 missiles. Although the bell gained popularity in the year 2000, the initial mention of the device can be traced back to the 1960 book, Morning of the Magicians, where it was depicted as a creation of German scientists. As mentioned, described as a radiant and rotating apparatus, it was speculated to possess either an anti-gravitational force or even the potential to manipulate time, supposedly within the framework of a German anti-gravity program. These accounts offered an insightful exploration of the bell, unveiling its enigmatic nature and sparking curiosity surrounding its alleged capabilities. In a thought-provoking scenario, it's been reported by some historical journalists that the infamous Colonel Hans Kammler could have potentially exchanged the bell with the US military in exchange for his own freedom. It is worth noting that Kammler mysteriously disappeared during the final stages of World War II and his whereabouts remain unknown to this day. While Project Paperclip saw the Allies repatriating numerous advanced German superweapons, including jets and missiles, there is no existing documentation indicating the capture of any iteration of the bell. This intriguing speculation raises questions about the potential fate of this enigmatic device and its possible involvement in secretive post-war dealings. In the realm of unidentified flying objects, there exists a persistent belief among some enthusiasts that the United States military not only apprehended prominent German scientists, but also engaged their expertise in the development of the anti-gravity technology associated with the bell. This intriguing notion is further fortified by the alleged occurrence of the Kecksburg incident, an event that unfolded in December 1965 when an unidentified flying object resembling a bell-shaped craft purportedly crash-landed just outside Kecksburg, Pennsylvania. Interestingly, the Kecksburg incident ties in with the bell, as NASA was involved with this object, and the crash happened during the same time as German scientists were hired there. Oddly enough, NASA said that all of the records of their findings were lost in 1987. So, was it possible that the German scientists who worked on the bell were taken on by the United States under the NASA program and told to work on a newer version of this bell, only for it to crash in Kecksburg, Pennsylvania. Strangely, another thing that's been pointed out by historical researchers is that the two objects are nearly identical in appearance. Kecksburg, a minute unincorporated rural community nestled in Mount Pleasant Township, Westmoreland County, Pennsylvania, finds itself situated a mere 32 miles southeast of the bustling city of Pittsburgh, it was over 50 years ago when an extraordinary incident occurred in this serene vicinity. An enigmatic object descended from the heavens and made its impactful landing within the confines of the nearby woodland. This peculiar occurrence, deemed of utmost significance, 
swiftly captured the attention of the United States military, who promptly dispatched a retrieval mission to secure the mysterious artifact. News reporters, state police personnel, and intrigued locals all converged on the scene, eagerly anticipating a glimpse of this otherworldly puzzle tucked away in the vast wilderness. As the story unraveled, it soon caught the attention of the nation, spreading like wildfire across the media landscape. Even to this day, a fraction of Kecksburg's residents maintain a lingering skepticism, their minds filled with curiosity and unanswered questions as to the true nature of the descending entity. The story starts on the 9th of December, 1965, when a phenomenon initially misconstrued as a luminous meteor captured the attention of numerous individuals across six states in the United States and at least two Canadian provinces. These states include Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Michigan, and New York, while the provinces encompass Ontario, especially in the city of Windsor and Quebec. Reports indicated that the bolide shed fragments while traversing the sky. However, there is evidence casting doubt on the notion that this fireball was, in fact, the infamous Kecksburg unidentified object. At the time, tracking stations and astronomers in both the USA and Canada concluded that the fireball or bolide likely extinguished itself, either burning up or landing near or in the western section of Lake Erie, approximately 150 miles north of Kecksburg. Additionally, the investigation, photographs and sightings suggested that the object's trajectory was too steep to align with that of a man-made spaceship re-entering Earth's orbit. Nevertheless, recent research challenges the accuracy of these measured trajectories and proposes that the object may indeed have fallen to Earth in the vicinity of Kecksburg. In summary, on the aforementioned date, an extraordinary incident unfolded as what initially appeared to be a bright meteor captivated the gaze of observers in multiple states and provinces. While early assessments indicated a probable outcome for the fireball's fate, subsequent investigations have shed doubt on whether this event was truly a UFO, intriguingly raising the possibility that the object may have descended upon Kecksburg as previously rumoured. The occurrence of the fireball, although not particularly unusual, still intrigued many observers. Fireballs, which are exceptionally bright meteors, are known to appear sporadically and often coincide with meteor showers. During the reported incident, the Geminid meteor shower was taking place, an annual event that typically spans from around December 4th to December 16th, with the peak activity falling between those dates. However, further studies revealed that the UFO in Kecksburg was not attributable to a meteor or meteorite. The initial sightings of the unidentified object in Kecksburg reportedly occurred at 4.47 in the afternoon, just moments before sunset, as witnessed by several individuals. According to these witnesses, the luminous object blazed a path through the cloudy skies, displaying a remarkable brightness. Interestingly, it appeared to deliberately decelerate and change its trajectory, veering away from the village as if to prevent a potential collision with any populated areas. Eventually, the unidentified object came to a rest in the nearby woods, seemingly executing a controlled landing. From a distance, observers noted indications of intelligent guidance as the object smoothly descended to the ground. Furthermore, multiple reports mentioned the occurrence of a sonic boom accompanied by vibrations and a distinct thudding sound upon impact. However, contrary to expectations of a high-impact collision, the object did not leave behind any significant evidence, such as a noticeable crater or a deep pit. Instead, individuals who later arrived at the scene attested that the object had only slightly penetrated the ground, suggesting a relatively shallow submersion. The absence of a significant impact site further intrigued and puzzled those investigating the incident. This carefully documented account of the Kecksburg sighting provides a comprehensive and detailed examination of the events that unfolded. By expanding upon the original text, we gain a deeper understanding of the witnesses' observations and the curious nature of the unidentified object's landing. According to various witnesses, there were sightings of blue smoke emanating from the area, while others noted the presence of a blue glow surrounding it. It is worth mentioning that both the blue smoke and glow were only temporary phenomena. In response to these sightings, the Kecksburg Volunteer Fire Department promptly mobilized to investigate, 
presuming it to be an airplane crash accompanied by a potential fire. Interestingly, the object that had fallen from the sky did not resemble a typical meteorite, but bore more resemblance to a satellite or some form of spacecraft. The incident attracted significant attention, drawing in numerous curious individuals, including journalists, television and radio news reporters from different parts of the area, including the nearby city of Greensburg. Together, they embarked on a collective search for the mysterious object that had descended from the heavens to the Earth's surface. Local authorities were present at the scene, and soon after, personnel from both the United States Air Force and United States Army arrived to investigate further. Notably, among the investigative team that arrived, there was a specialized unit of men, outfitted in fire-resistant suits. These individuals were equipped with Geiger counters and other sophisticated tools necessary for accurate scientific analysis. Their presence added an element of meticulousness and expertise to the investigation. The comprehensive exploration of this incident allows us to delve into the details of the witnesses' accounts and the subsequent response by various entities involved. The military swiftly established a perimeter around the vicinity using ropes, conscientiously instructing civilians to evacuate the area. In an effort to maintain strict control, they resorted to pointing guns at curious onlookers, compelling their withdrawal. Unbeknownst to the military at the time, there were actually a significant number of townspeople already situated deep within the surrounding woods, near the site of the crashed space-traveling vessel. Quite a few witnesses had the opportunity to closely observe the peculiar craft. This unidentified object resembled the shape of an acorn and boasted a considerable size, comparable to that of a Volkswagen Beetle car. The downed spacecraft exhibited a radiant golden hue, lacking any visible external protrusions such as antennas, and was adorned with inscriptions of an unfamiliar script towards its base. Resourceful individuals managed to hurriedly transcribe these enigmatic writings onto paper before being relocated by the military. Allegedly, some local residents were able to capture photographic evidence of the spacecraft, but their films were promptly confiscated by the vigilant military personnel. Jerry Betters, an acclaimed jazz vocalist from Pittsburgh, emerged as a significant eyewitness during the 40th anniversary of the incident. According to Mr. Betters, the saga began on the evening of December 9, 1965, when he first caught wind of the crash through a radio broadcast. Driven by curiosity, he courageously embarked on a journey to the crash site, accompanied by a group of like-minded individuals. Despite encountering roadblocks erected by the military along the main routes, Betters relied on his knowledge of the lesser-known back roads to successfully navigate his way to the scene. Upon arrival, a remarkable sight unfolded before his eyes. Soldiers peppered the area, their presence accentuated by the noticeable presence of high-ranking military officials and individuals adorned in laboratory attire. Intriguingly, this peculiar aircraft exhibited mystifying hieroglyphic inscriptions, providing a tantalizing glimpse into an unknown and exotic world. Acting with precision and efficiency, the military personnel swiftly loaded the craft onto a flatbed truck, which promptly disappeared into the depths of the surrounding woods. One explanation that gained significant popularity regarding the object retrieved on that December evening was that it could have been a fallen satellite from either Russia or the United States. This explanation appears to serve as a plausible cover story for the military's involvement. However, many who have investigated this story have reservations regarding the satellite theory. The first account revolves around the re-entry of the Russian Cosmos 96 Venera-type spacecraft, which was launched on December 9, 1965, coinciding with the Kecksburg object. This particular spacecraft was part of a failed mission, intending to send a Russian spacecraft to Venus. Regrettably, it encountered a malfunction that resulted in the loss of control, prematurely terminating its flight trajectory and causing it to crash in Canada. Intriguingly, the Air Force tracking data pertaining to the Russian satellite indicates that it fell 13 hours prior to the Kecksburg incident. Furthermore, this timing was successfully corroborated by NASA. These significant pieces of information lend credibility to researchers' doubts surrounding the satellite explanation. With an in-depth exploration of the events, it becomes clear that the fallen satellite narrative presents an incomplete understanding of what transpired in Kecksburg that evening. 
By enriching our analysis and considering additional factors, we can better grasp the intricacies of this mysterious incident. Another theory of the Kecksburg Unidentified Object Sighting is the possibility of it being a fallen USA satellite, the General Electric Mark II, which the USA Air Force launched as a spy satellite. But, official records of the General Electric Mark II satellite launches do not confirm such a satellite passed over the Kecksburg area or after the object was retrieved by the military. However, the General Electric Mark II does have a shape that could be described somewhat like the Kecksburg unidentified object. One of the most fascinating observed assertions revolved around the peculiar inscriptions discovered on the Kecksburg object situated at its base. Investigators maintained that these inscriptions bore a striking resemblance to hieroglyphics, a form of written language historically attributed to the ancient Egyptians. Remarkably, no known earthly satellites display such writings. These inscriptions appear to belong to a foreign language hitherto undocumented on our planet. Exploring potential similarities between previously encountered unidentified flying objects and the Kecksburg phenomenon might shed light on this intriguing discovery. Extensive investigations have been conducted regarding the notorious incidents of flying saucer crashes at New Mexico and Aztec, New Mexico in 1947. Remarkably, these investigations have revealed intriguing connections to another reported flying saucer that purportedly crashed in Mexico in 1950, subsequently recovered by the United States Army. The crash in New Mexico provided compelling evidence as it unveiled the presence of humanoid entities who possessed an uncanny resemblance to ordinary human beings. However, what set them apart was their distinctively diminutive stature, with the majority measuring a uniform height of a mere three feet. The Mystery Woman In August 1954, the top of Mount Palomar in the United States hosted a remarkable convention that featured details on mysterious flying aircrafts, detailing eyewitness encounters and sharing knowledge about sightings that no one knew about. The event took place at an altitude of over 1,800 meters, and different members in the community gathered to exchange ideas and share experiences about these strange phenomena. The convention was highly memorable, and it attracted participants from different parts of the country who were keen to learn and engage in discussions surrounding the convention was attended by over a thousand individuals from various walks of life including journalists from all over the globe, FBI agents, witnesses, and even individuals who were merely curious. All of the people who were contacted shared their distinct experiences. At the conclusion of the initial day's proceedings, there was a commotion among the attendees as they observed the unanticipated presence of an attractive woman accompanied by a duo of men. One of the men had glasses, and all three individuals were of fair complexion. The woman distinguished herself with her blonde hair and strikingly black and intense eyes. Further standout features included unusual cranial formation and an unusual bone mark on her forehead. During the convention, a journalist from Brazil was in attendance and conducted an interview with a group of individuals who signed the guest book. According to the journalist's research, the woman in the group was named Dolores Barrios and she identified herself as being a fashion designer from New York. During the meeting the next day, Martins managed to take a photograph of the woman, which surprised her, and led to her immediately leaving the area with her two friends. Oddly enough, moments after the three individuals left and ran for the nearby forest, those in attendance reported that a mysterious aircraft was seen taking off and leaving the area at incredible speeds. However, due to the speed in which the aircraft was travelling, the witnesses in attendance reported that they were unable to capture any photographic evidence of the event. Despite thorough investigation, no individuals have come forward to claim knowledge or identification of the unusual individuals depicted in the photographs. As of today, it remains a mystery who they are, what their purpose was, and why they left the event in a hurry. Jerome of Sandy Cove In September of 1863, an unidentified man was found on the beach of Sandy Cove and given the name Jerome. This man's true identity remains a mystery to this day. The discovery of Jerome sparked curiosity and questions about how he ended up where he did and where he originated from. 
the individual in question was discovered with amputated legs, leaving him unable to stand. When questioned by locals, he provided limited responses, perhaps indicating a lack of proficiency in both English and French languages. He was requested to reveal his name, but his response was unclear, as he muttered something which sounded like Jerome. Consequently, he was addressed by this name. An eight-year-old boy named George Colin Albright discovered him in the village of Digby Neck, and he was later taken to the Albright family's home to receive proper care and attention. The boy found him in a state of ill health and decided to take it upon himself to bring him back to health. Jerome had undergone a surgical procedure where both of his legs were amputated above the knees and the incisions showed that the surgeon performing the amputation was highly skilled. It is evident by some that Jerome had lost both of his legs at the same time, but as of right now, researchers are unsure of how this happened. When the man was discovered, it was observed that the stumps on his body were only partially healed and still covered by bandages. In addition, he was experiencing the unpleasant effects of being exposed to cold weather for an extended period of time. Visitors to his sick bed were interested in learning more about him, but were surprised to discover that he was unable to comprehend French, Latin, Italian or Spanish. These shortcomings highlighted his limited linguistic abilities, which impacted his interactions with foreign partners. According to witnesses, the man in question was observed to be avoiding the attention of the curious onlookers, and when faced with unwanted guests, he growled like a dog to scare them away. The observers also noticed that the man seemed to have hands that were too soft to belong to a manual labourer, and he was described as having a Mediterranean appearance. The family who had found him had a hard time supporting another member, which resulted in him being passed from one household to another. Finally, the Baptist community of Digby Neck suggested that he was a Catholic, and so subsequently sent him to the nearby French community of Metagon. This experience of being shifted from family to family had a significant impact on Jerome's life. The government then got involved and made the decision to approve a fixed sum of $2 per week to provide financial support to Jerome. After the community persistently attempted to break his aloofness, Jerome was compelled to reside with Jean Nicola, a multilingual Corsican defector. Nicola was unable to engage him in conversation, but Jerome remained residing in the household of Nicola for an additional seven years. During his stay, he became a beloved companion of the female members of the household. Soon after the passing of Juliette Nicola, her husband relocated to Europe while Jerome found shelter with Dedier and Zabeth Como near Metagon. Jerome passed away on the 15th of April, 1912. Decades passed, and various individuals claimed they knew who Jerome was. Many believed the man to be Italian, perhaps a mutilated nobleman who kept his silence to save himself from political rivals. Another theory was that he was an Italian naval officer, injured on board and cruelly abandoned by his crewmates. Those who cared for him claimed he would sometimes utter Colombo and Trieste, further proving that he was Italian. The Mystery of the Green Children of Woolpit The Green Children of Woolpit is a legend that dates back to the 12th century and is believed to have originated in the town of Woolpit in Suffolk, England. The legend tells the story of two children, a brother and a sister, who were found wandering in a field outside the town of Woolpit. They were strange-looking children with green skin and spoke a language that no one in the town could understand. The children were taken in by a local landowner, Sir Richard de Cain, who tried to feed them with bread and water. However, the children refused to eat any food except for green beans. They appeared to be in good health, but they refused to eat anything else other than green beans. Over time, the children began to adapt to their new surroundings and eventually learned to speak English. They told their hosts that they came from a place called St. Martin's Land, which was a world of perpetual twilight. They claimed that the sun never shone in their world, and that everything was always green. As the children grew older, their skin gradually lost its green colour, and they began to eat regular food. The boy became sick and passed away, while the girl adapted to her new life and eventually married a man from King's Lynn. She reportedly retained her greenish hue for the rest of her life. The legend of the green children of Woolpit has been the subject of much speculation and debate over the centuries. 
with some suggesting that the children were actually advanced beings or creatures from another dimension, while others believed that they were the survivors of an ancient civilization or the descendants of a race of green-skinned people. However, most historians and scholars believe that the story of the green children is likely a combination of folklore and historical fact. The green color of their skin may have been the result of a rare genetic condition known as chlorosis, which causes the skin to turn greenish-yellow due to a lack of iron in the blood. Alternatively, the children may have been suffering from malnutrition or exposure to an unknown substance that caused their skin to turn green. The story of the green children of Woolpit has been retold many times over the centuries and has become a popular legend in English folklore. Despite the many theories and speculations surrounding the story, the true origins of the green children remain a mystery. The Mysterious Lady in White The Lady in White is a common ghostly apparition that has been reported in various cultures and regions around the world. The origins of the Lady in White legend are unclear, but many believe it to have originated from the 19th century Victorian era in Europe, where it was believed that a woman who passed away tragically and without justice could become a ghost, dressed in a long white dress and haunting the place of her death. The Lady in White is often associated with tragic or violent deaths, and the apparition is commonly seen near or around the location where she passed away. The Lady in White is often described as a beautiful, pale woman, wearing a long white dress, sometimes with a veil or shawl covering her hair. Her appearance is usually ethereal, and she is said to have a peaceful or sad expression. The Lady in White is often reported to appear in areas such as graveyards, abandoned buildings, or on the side of the road. Many people believe that the Lady in White's appearance is a warning of danger or tragedy, while others believe that the apparition is a lost soul seeking justice for her untimely passing. Regardless of the belief, the Lady in White has become a popular figure in many ghost stories and legends. There are many reported sightings of the Lady in White around the world, with each region or culture having its own interpretation of the apparition. For example, in Hispanic culture, the Lady in White is known as La Llorona, or the weeping woman who haunts rivers and waterways, mourning the loss of her children. In the United States, there are many stories of the Lady in White, including at the Myrtles Plantation in Louisiana, where a ghostly woman in a white dress has been reported to haunt the grounds. In New York, the Lady in White is said to appear on the Taconic State Parkway, where she passed away in a car collision. She is also reported to haunt the Donovan Mill in Nevada, where a woman named Elizabeth McGrath was taken out in a mining accident. The origin of the Lady in White motif is unclear, but it is likely that it has evolved from various cultural and historical sources. One possible explanation for the Lady in White motif is that it is a manifestation of the archetypal figure of the Mourning Woman. The archetype of the Mourning Woman is a universal theme in mythology and folklore, and it often represents the grief and sorrow of a community or a nation. The Lady in White may be seen as a specific manifestation of this archetype, representing the grief and sorrow of a particular time and place. Another possible explanation for the Lady in White motif is that it is a manifestation of the concept of residual haunting. Residual haunting is a paranormal phenomenon in which an event from the past is replayed over and over again in a particular location, creating a ghostly impression. In this context, the Lady in White may be seen as a residual haunting of a woman who passed away, or who experienced great emotional turmoil in the location where she is seen. The Lady in White is also often associated with specific historical events or legends. In some cases, the Lady in White is said to be the ghost of a woman who passed away during childbirth, or who was betrayed by a lover. The Lady in White is a fascinating and enduring motif in folklore and ghost stories around the world. Although the origin of the motif is uncertain, it is clear that it has captured the imagination of countless storytellers and continues to haunt our collective imagination. The Vatican, the headquarters of the Catholic Church, is a site of great religious significance for millions of people around the world. However, it is also known to have a long and complex history of paranormal and supernatural phenomena that have fascinated people for centuries. One of the most famous paranormal incidents at the Vatican is the story of the ghost of Pope Leo XIII. According to legend, 
1884, the Pope had a vision of Satan and heard him challenging the church to a century-long battle. In response, the Pope composed a prayer to St. Michael the Archangel, asking for protection against the devil's schemes. It is said that the Pope's vision and prayer were widely circulated among the faithful and contributed to the growing interest in exorcisms and other supernatural practices within the church. The Vatican has also been linked to numerous ghost sightings and hauntings over the years. One of the most well-known of these is the story of the ghost of Joan of Arc. According to legend, Joan of Arc was brought to Rome in 1430, where she was interrogated. It is said that her ghost still haunts the church, where it has been seen by numerous visitors over the years. The Vatican also has a long history of secret societies and esoteric traditions that have fueled speculation about its involvement in paranormal and supernatural practices. One of the most well-known of these is the Order of the Knights Templar, a medieval Catholic military order that was accused of practicing witchcraft and other dark arts. While the Templars were disbanded by the Church in the 14th century, their legacy has lived on in popular culture and theories, and they are still widely associated with the Vatican and its inner workings. In recent years, the Vatican has become more open to discussing the paranormal and supernatural. In 2014, for example, the Church held its first ever conference on exorcism, which was attended by hundreds of priests and laypeople from around the world. The conference was intended to address the growing interest in exorcisms and the paranormal, and to provide guidance to priests and other religious figures who encounter people claiming to be possessed by demons or other malevolent spirits. Overall, the Vatican's long and complex history of paranormal and supernatural phenomena has fascinated people for centuries. This mysterious photograph has just been posted on social media, showing what appears to be a massive object hovering close to the moon. Oddly enough, this isn't the first time that mysterious objects have been seen close to the moon, and it's caused some users to suggest that this may be an unidentified object. Those who've studied the unknown have reported that the moon is a hotspot, and that every year thousands of mysterious objects can be seen close to it. Unidentified objects have sparked intrigue and controversy for decades. Although they are most commonly associated with sightings in Earth's atmosphere, Numerous accounts over the years have reported unidentified objects in the proximity of Earth's natural satellite, the Moon. Reports of mysterious aircrafts near the Moon have been made by astronauts, astronomers and casual observers alike. The Moon's relative proximity, combined with its lack of atmosphere, makes it a perfect backdrop for observing anomalies. Often, these observations are of unexpected objects moving across the lunar surface or near the lunar horizon. There are multiple reasons that could potentially explain these sightings. Firstly, it is essential to clarify that many sightings can be explained by natural or man-made phenomena. For example, satellites and space debris in Earth's orbit could easily be mistaken for unidentified objects when they pass between an observer and the moon. Another explanation could be related to optical illusions or misinterpretations of natural lunar phenomena. The human brain is predisposed to identify patterns, even where none exist, a phenomenon known as pareidolia. This could lead to interpreting shadows or irregular lunar features as foreign objects. Lunar transient phenomena, temporary changes in the lunar surface's appearance due to outgassing or impacts, might also be misinterpreted as mysterious activity. Despite these potential explanations, some argue that a subset of lunar sightings cannot be easily dismissed. Astronauts of Apollo missions have reported seeing flashing lights and other unexplained phenomena during their lunar voyages. While some of these instances were likely attributable to cosmic rays hitting their retinas, others remain unexplained. Notably though, none of the Apollo missions reported sightings that would unequivocally indicate the presence of advanced crafts. In the broader context, the attention given to sightings near the moon reflects humanity's enduring fascination with the possibility of advanced life. It's a curiosity that drives not only the passionate debates over individual sightings, but also more substantial scientific endeavors like the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. As we continue to explore our universe, the question of extraterrestrial life remains one of the most compelling unsolved mysteries of our time. As of right now, 
While most mysterious objects seen close to the lunar surface can be attributed to man-made or natural phenomena, some instances remain unexplained, contributing to ongoing discussions about advanced life. These sightings underscore the importance of vigilant observation and open-minded inquiry as we continue our exploration of the cosmos. Whether these unexplained instances are evidence of extraterrestrial civilizations, however, remains to be proven. As of now, the extraordinary claim of extraterrestrial presence in our cosmic neighborhood still requires extraordinary evidence. The quest for understanding the unknown has always propelled humanity's foray into space. Astronauts, as the frontiersmen of this cosmic voyage, have occasionally reported encounters with unidentified objects, spurring fascination and debate. Astronauts from various space missions have reported encountering objects or phenomena that they could not readily identify. Perhaps the most famous of these is the account of the Apollo 11 mission. Buzz Aldrin, the lunar module pilot, reported seeing a light that seemed to be following their spacecraft en route to the moon. However, after careful analysis, it was concluded that what they were likely seeing was sunlight reflecting off an adapter panel jettisoned earlier in the mission. Similarly, during the STS-48 mission of the Space Shuttle Discovery, video footage captured several objects moving in unusual paths. While some enthusiasts interpret this as evidence of advanced activity, NASA scientists maintain that the objects were small ice particles disturbed by the shuttle's thrusters. Astronaut Gordon Cooper also reported a sighting during his Mercury mission in 1963. He claimed to have seen a greenish object approach his capsule, which was also picked up by the tracking station in Australia. However, no conclusive evidence has emerged to identify the object. Furthermore, space agencies like NASA conduct rigorous follow-up investigations to identify any unexplained phenomena. Often, these investigations provide plausible explanations although in some cases, like Cooper's sightings, the phenomena remain unexplained. In a broader context, these astronaut accounts emphasize the importance of open inquiry and the need for rigorous, evidence-based investigation in our exploration of space. Every unknown object or phenomenon represents a potential opportunity for new discoveries, whether about our own technology, the nature of space, or possibly even advanced life. The International Space Station an orbiting laboratory for international collaborative research has become an unexpected focal point in discussions surrounding unidentified objects. Reports of sightings around the International Space Station have abounded since the station's inception, fueled by both astronaut accounts and public access to live feed cameras on the International Space Station. The sightings range from unexpected light phenomena to objects appearing to move in intelligent ways. It's speculated that if these mysterious objects are indeed evidence of advanced life, their interest could stem from a desire to understand our level of technological development, much like how we would be intrigued by alien technology. The International Space Station represents a significant achievement in human technology and international cooperation, making it an intriguing subject for observation from an outsider's perspective. It's where we conduct research in various disciplines, including biology, physics and astronomy. Advanced civilizations might be interested in monitoring our progress, particularly as the International Space Station represents our most advanced foothold in space to date. Software artifacts or glitches in the live feed can also create the illusion of unexplained phenomena. For instance, abrupt cuts in the live feed, often claimed to be deliberate attempts by NASA to hide evidence of these aircrafts, are usually due to loss of signal or transitions between different cameras. That said, some sightings in the vicinity of the International Space Station do remain unexplained and are cause for scientific curiosity. Elon Musk's first human colony on Mars would have to survive on a vegan diet. It could not be anything more like a movie. Elon Musk recently announced that future Martians will survive by growing their own food in solar-powered hydroponic glass dome farms. As a result, meat will not be on the menu and these first people on Mars will have to survive on a completely vegan diet. Musk does say, at least for the moment, that it will likely only be the first 100 people on Mars who are limited to fully vegan cuisine, owing simply to the extremely high levels of power which will be required to run and maintain the self-sustaining farms, combined with the obviously limited resources. 
For example, a study written by John Strickland from the National Space Society outlined the fact that you would halve the number of people domes could sustain if they also required meat and fish compared to a vegan diet. Similarly, it is also thought that if people did stick to a plant-only diet, a 0.3 square mile farm with four levels to it could feed a colony of approximately 5,000. However, Musk does not foresee glass domes being the story of life on Mars forever and rather suggests them to be a form of temporary habitats for the first cohort of people to help develop more permanent infrastructure on the Red Planet. With Starship, the Mars rocket, looking highly likely to be ready for its first test orbit sometime this year, the possibility of life on Mars is becoming increasingly real. Therefore, preparing for other logistical details, such as how to then survive once you have reached Mars, will be the next groundbreaking research needed in the field to continue expanding our horizons, quite literally. Plans for life on Mars are wide and varied. China, United States, and the United Arab Emirates all have plans to succeed at cracking human travel to Mars by 2040, and the UAE has gone so far as to plan future civilization on the Red Planet. However, Musk is currently making headway and has the most aggressive plan, aiming to get a human crew to Mars by 2026 and an established thriving city by 2050. With international involvement creating even more competition and incentive to be the first to Mars and first to facilitate life on Mars too. So, what do you make of this mysterious photograph? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.